At this point, we should actually be able to run our program and see that debug screen. And what you're going to see is that it doesn't show up. And that is because we set it to hidden by default. Um, another problem is that we are drawing to the uh, top leftmost corner of the screen. So um, it's going to show up behind this. And the reason why, see I'm hitting the F1 key here, and you can actually see it popping up in the background here, but it's actually behind our um, Hello World. And that's because our Hello World is being added to our base game class where we normally wouldn't be drawing. So it's not actually being factored into the screen manager's um, indexing system here. So what we can do, um, in the end, we're gonna, we're gonna be getting rid of all this uh, test text. Um, but for now, what we can do is actually just move all this down so we can actually see our frames per second. So let's come in here and uh, go down to our game one. And uh, let's see, we're, we're drawing our test sprite fonts at zero, zero. So let's bump those down. Let's say, um, put that, oops, I gotta stop my thing from running here. I'm gonna put that at 100 and I'll put that at 130. Take rad avatar, move him down to, uh, uh, let's see, 150 should be good, hopefully. I'm just going to run that and see how that looks. So you can see those got bumped way down here. Um, our test screen is still working just fine. So now when we hit our F1 key, we should actually be able to see our debug screen. You can't quite tell that the... Um, the black background box, you know, rectangle that we created here is transparent because it's kind of black on black. Um, the frames per second, uh, I know that a lot of you are going to have questions as to why this is appearing so low. Uh, the, the reason why is that XNA is going to be managing our frames per second in such a way that um, it limits it, it limits it so that it can use more of its processing time to, to apply that to uh, the update cycles and things like that that are occurring, the, the more important features of the game. Uh, 50 to 60 frames per second is still faster than your eyes are going to be able to detect. Um, when you start getting into thousands of frames per second, you're actually going to be drawing faster than your screen can can actually render that uh, most lcd monitors uh, you're you're going to actually start to see screen tearing at certain super high uh, frame rates uh, we can actually disable that and i may do that um, just to kind of show an example of what i'm talking about uh, if we Close this out and go back to our uh, game class. Oh, I guess we're already there, aren't we? We can go up to our initialization um, sub in the game class and uh, insert in these these three lines. I'm just going to paste them in here. Uh, the globals.graphics synchronize with vertical ray trace equals false. Um, apply changes and then uh, the is fixed time step equals false. So it's no, this is really the line here that's going to be fixing the time step. Uh, if we turn that off, then it's going to be basically drawing through as fast as it can. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go through every cycle, including drawing every, you know, with each CPU cycle, I guess is how that works. Uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to explain, but essentially we're no longer locking in the uh, frames per second into the game. So it allows it to draw as fast as it can, along with all the game updates and everything else. Uh, in the real world, you're actually going to want to let it um, 
handle its own frames per second because I, you're not going to your eyes aren't even going to register anything that high. You're not going to see a, a, a change in your gameplay really uh, at super high frames per second like that. So uh, you know it, why waste those processing cycles on drawing additional frames um, when when you know those those cycles could be going toward processing the actual data and objects and particles and everything else in the game. That's you know kind of it in a nutshell. I'll go ahead and run this uh, so we can kind of see. Uh, you'll see a massive boost in the frames per second. Now I'm looking at you know uh, 1500 and climbing. So you know based upon. Uh, you know your processor speed you may see a, a change in this you know a, an increase or a decrease based upon the performance of your system your graphics uh, capabilities and things like that um, but again we want to lock this in we want we want to let XNA manage its frame rate and use those extra CPU cycles to focus things that are important you know like particle effects and whatnot in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these lines and let XNA manage our frame rate. Alright, so we're back down where we ought to be. Um, as you can see, the active screens are just the debug screen. I was uh, incorrect in my assertion earlier that the debug screen would not be monitored. I'm sure you could lock that out still just by isolating that name. Uh, the focus screen is test screen at the moment even though the, the test screen is hidden. Yeah, I thought I shut that down. Actually I uh, we'll clear that out later. We just we, we never set the focus screens to uh, clear. Um, that'll be an easy fix and we'll tackle that later on. Anyway, uh, this pretty much concludes this tutorial segment. Uh, next up, we will be creating our title screen. Uh, so we're going to actually start getting into the, uh, the game aspect of this design or this uh, series. So I hope uh, this has been helpful for everybody. Um, <clears throat> I will catch you on the uh, next uh, segment. Uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, I wish you all luck in your projects.